Folks, David here on the Vintage Future once again, and I want to compare for you these five of Viberg's most popular lasts. This is the 310, the 1035, the 2030, the 2040, and the 2020. As far as sizing, so you know what you're looking at, this is a nine and a half, this is a 10, another 10, this is a 10, and this is a nine and a half. And for further reference, I could pull in this 310 in size nine, nine and a half here, size nine here. They both fit, I wear them all the time, no problems. The, the alignment on this is a little bit better. I'll tell you about my Brannock in a second. And then I could also pull in this 2020 Halkett boot. It's a different pattern than this service boot, and this is also a size 10 in the 2020, whereas this is a size nine and a half in the 2020. So this right here is usually on an E-width, although you can get it in a D-width for certain special order items. This is usually a double E, they say, the 1035. This is usually an E-width, although you can special order it in a D-width or a double E-width. This is usually just considered a, an E-width, this 2040 here. And the 2020 last is usually considered to be a D-width, although they are considering, this is 2022, early on, this is like March 2022, they are considering putting this out in like a double E-width maybe, maybe E, more likely double E. And so yeah, that's kind of what you're looking at here. And as far as the makeups, so you know what you're seeing, again, this is olive waxed flesh from the Horween Tannery. This is Merriam Tannery, Italy. Uh, Merriam Tannery Musho Horse Butt with the TPR finish. That stands for thermoplastic resin. It's this, this, this extra finish that makes it a little darker and then it starts to wear off over time. This is Horween Saddle Tan Chrome Pack. This is Horween Tobacco Chamois. And this right here is Merriam Tannery Port or 1071 Horse Butt. This is the Vaquetta, not the TPR that has that finish. It's just kind of raw. And this is a Division Road collaboration, a Freenote Cloth collaboration off of the .com, and two more Division Road collaborations. This one is, it was off the dot com and it ended up getting sold a few places because they had to cancel the run. But anyways, that's that. And then this again is off the dot com. And I also have some of my other boots here. My clinch, my, here, I'll just show you just so you know ahead of time. My clinch, highliner, uh, MP on the berry last, the, the white's berry last. It's a white, white's MP. Here, my Alden. Very last plain toe boot in Horween color H shell Cordovan. And lastly, but not least, because I love these things, this is a white semi dress boot on the C461 last. So I brought those in. I'll probably just do a little comparison at the end. Anyway, so now you know what we're looking at 310, 1035, 2030, 2040, and 2020 last. Let's jump in. We're going to talk about shape, volume, and proportion. So, shape is what we're talking about when we just look at the outside, the silhouette. If this was just a, like a black blot on a piece of paper, what's this shape right here? What's this shape? And also when you look at it like this, what is this shape? That's what I mean when I say shape. We're going to talk about shape. We're going to talk about volume. In other words, how much space is there in there? Uh, if you were going to measure it in like cubic centimeters or something like that, how much space? So you could have this in size nine and a half, like I have this one, and this in size nine. And if you were to measure the cubic centimeters, this would have less because it's a half size smaller than this. They're the same shape. They just have less volume, you know, it's a different size. And then proportion would be where is that volume located, right? So you could compare these two. This is a 310 and a 1035 right here. And you could say, Let's just say in theory they had exactly the same volume if, if you were to like measure the cubic centimeters. But then you could say, well, this though proportionally has more volume though here in the toe, but maybe a little bit less here in the ankle. Whereas this one has less volume in the toe, but more volume in the ankle and the heel, right? So that's, that's the kind of thing. So shape, volume, or how much space is inside, and, and proportion, like where is that located? And along with that, we'll be talking about like when I wear these, 
how close to the facings come. So that, that has to do with the pattern and, and the instep height. This is the instep, like right here, because you might have high volume feet, low volume feet. You might have a high instep or low instep, and you're going to want to know that as far as fit goes. So yeah, we're talking a lot about fit here, sizing and all that stuff. You know, um, for instance, like we'll get here later, but like on these, the facings come, come a lot closer together because there's more volume that needs to be taken up for my skinny feet. Whereas on this 2020 last, when I wear it, these facings stay nice and far apart. One, because of the pattern and two, because this just has lower volume and the proportions are that way. Uh, but some of it is pattern. So for instance, like not to get ahead of ourselves, but this is a size 10. This is a size nine and a half. So they're close to the same, but because this is a different pattern, whereas this one, the facings are kind of like this when I wear it, like they stay about an inch apart or so, inch and a half maybe. With this Halkett boot, when I wear it, same last and everything, but the facings pretty much touch all the way. So that's just a different pattern really that's causing that. So anyways, let's jump into it. All right, so we're gonna start on this side because in my mind, this is the most basic last. This represents, I'm not saying they didn't try. It's not like there's no nuances here. They are trying to you know, make it look right, get it proportionally correct, make it look good, make it wearable and all that. They are looking into it, but this is the most basic because it's basically a big brick, whereas this is the most nuanced last here. This is not nuanced compared to like a bespoke dress shoe or something like that, but in the boot world, which is a lot more rugged, this is considered to be, at least as far as a stock boot, something you just buy off the shelf. Uh, this is considered to be a very nuanced last, very anatomical, this, this 2020 last. So anyways, anyways we're going to start here. So this is the 310. In my mind, as I said, this is more of a brick. Just picture this rectangle, like a, a loaf of bread. Just psh. There's some curves to it. Obviously, you can see the curves and stuff. But more or less, the sides just go from the heel. They just kind of go like straight forward all the way past your toes and poof, square off at the end. And then this way too, it's, it's nice and big. So it's, it's a big brick. Now, how does this brick stay on your foot, right? Does it feel like you're just strapping your foot to a board? No, actually. In that way, I think it's a very well-designed last. If you compare the facings how close they come together on this particular pattern and last and the height of the instep on this 310. It can be deceiving because this is such a big toe, but what I found, and I've worn, I've had like four pairs of 310s. I think I've had like 15, maybe close to 20 pairs of 2030s come through at different sizes and everything. I've traded them, sold them, whatever. Um, this is my only pair of 1035s. I've had two or three pairs of 2040s and two pairs of 2020. Anyway, so that's my experience there. Um, with all that, I'm going to say the instep on a 310 and how close the facings come together is pretty much smack dab in the middle for me. And I have a very skinny foot. It's skinny. It's low volume. I have flat feet, that flat arches, um, skinny ankles, skinny heel. Um, as far as the shape of my foot, um, Along this side of my foot, my toes like to go straight forward. They don't splay out, but they also don't kind of bend in. They go straight forward at the big toe, and then they kind of curve like this. Uh, my Brannock is a 10.5C heel to ball. That's my arch length. And a 10C heel to toe, overall length. So if you think about it, these are all 9.5s and 10s. The ones that are 9.5 are one size down from my arch length and a half size down from my overall length. Whereas the ones that are size 10 are true to size to my overall length and half down from my heel to ball. And as far as I'm concerned, after wearing all these and stuff, that's the correct sizing. And honestly, I learned a lot of that from talking to other people. Probably the main guy would be Chinese Broccoli, Bryn. Um, find him on Reddit, the Stitch Down Discord, Instagram and all that. He's been super helpful to tons of people, including me. Um, he and I, you know, at first started debating and he really helped me kind of see that he's right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that's kind of how I think it should be. Um, everyone's feet are different though. So this, back to the 310, the instep, how close the facings come together is about right smack dab in the middle of all the Viber glasts 
and patterns that I've tried. So that locks you in. So honestly, when I wear these, even with my low instep, the facings look pretty much like that. So this holds my foot in pretty well. And this heel, I would say, is actually either the same as, or maybe even just a hair narrower than that of the famous 2030. See if you can kind of tell there. A lot of these, you kind of have to wear them, but at least looking at them will get you started to see. And if you look at the heel of this 1035, the 1035 definitely has a, a bigger heel cup area, this whole area here, than the 2030 and the 310. So medium instep, I would say a medium sized heel width here. Same with this. Um, the facings don't like necessarily come and touch here for me, for my skinny ankles. They, they do stay out a little bit. So it's a probably medium volume and proportion uh, ankle there. And then obviously, this is a high volume last if you're just talking about the toe. But proportionally, all that volume is brought forward to the toe. So if you were just looking at this back half of the boot, honestly, I'd say it's like more similar to something like a 2020 or a 2040 than it is to a 2030 and a 1035 in that it's going to have a narrower shaft here that holds your ankle like slightly narrower heel and instep like i feel so snug in these it's funny you get all this toe room like you can move your toes for days in this massive toe box i mean just look at the Look at the difference here, the size of this toe box. Crazy, right? I mean, it's like, granted, these have collapsed a little bit, but, but even before that, I mean, it's like almost twice the size as far as just vertical clearance in there, the height. You have so much toe room in there, but in the back, I just always feel like my foot is locked in plenty good uh, for a whole day's wear. Same with these guys. So that, that should kind of describe it to you. Now let's talk about the shape this way though. It's anatomical. As I said, my toes, my big toes, they wanna to go straight forward. They don't splay out, they don't push in. They wanna go straight forward. So I have plenty of room for those big toes to comfortably go straight forward. And then this last kind of follows the curvature of my other toes all the way down the other side of my foot. And I find it to be really comfortable. As I said, I'm a C width and this is an E. And I still just feel like there's they're, they're a little big. Like as you can see this, kind of ripple right here. See this ripple? That's extra material that's not needed. So if I had a bigger instep on my foot, it'd fill this out a little more and I wouldn't really have that. But yeah, it's a nice comfortable last in that regard. So the footprint of this for me is very nice. I really like the footprint of the 310. So now let's move on to the 1035. As I said, the 1035 has this massive heel. In fact, I'm gonna turn these around so you can just see the heels on these. So if you just look at these three, actually let's, let's do all of them just because we can. So if we look at the heels on all these, what you'll see is this has the most narrow heel. It might be hard to tell because of the size of this eight inch shaft, but this is a really narrow heel as well. The 2040 is like a V shape. It's like like that. The heel is super narrow and then it just gets wider. So these two are going to be really narrow. And then these two are going to be about the same. But this is like this huge bulbous thing. It's like an onion back there. Right? Big. Big, big, big. So that's the 1035. Um, in fact, with the 1035, that's probably one of the most notable features, I would say, is that really bulbous heel. It's not terrible. And to be honest, it, it, it's kind of overrated having the, the heel cup your heel. Like you do want it to cup the sides of your heel to a certain extent. Uh, it feels good, but functionally, it doesn't make a huge difference for most people. You know, it's not like if it's not pinching the sides of your heel that your heel's gonna be banging around. It's more about getting that heel lock right here at the back of the heel. How it jogs right here, that kind of like cups, like the top 
back of your foot and poof, locks it in place. That's the most important part. And you really see that on some of these last. See this big jog right here? Um, this white has a really extreme jog and I love it. Look at that. Whoosh, just like curves in right there. That locks the back of your heel in. But having a heel cup that's like a little too wide for your heel, I mean, it feels good to have it cupped, but it's not really that big a deal. Anyways, the heel on this thing is the most, I think, identifying feature of the 1035. But let's talk about some of the other things. Um, as far as shape, I mean, the side profile is pretty similar. I don't even know how to do this. <laughs> pretty similar to any other service boot, honestly. Like, once these boots are worn in and, like, the toes have collapsed a little bit and stuff, you know, if somebody were to just hold this up, be like, which last is this? Most Viberg fans wouldn't be able to differentiate instantly. It might take them a second. Like, I don't know. Is this the 1035 or the 2030 or the 2020? From the side? I don't know. What about this? Especially if I cover the heel. You know, what about this? Um, what about this? You know, they all kind of look the same. So the difference is in that heel and also this area. This unlike the 2030, is much more similar to the 2040 and the 310 in that it is pretty anatomical. Like, again, goes straight right here, allowing for your big toes to go straight forward. It's not pushing your big toes in. And then once it gets past your big toes, it has this nice curvature around where your other toes are and back to the other side of the foot. For that reason, as far as the footprint goes, it's very comfortable. It doesn't impede your toes at all. That's good because if it's going to push your toes in too much, um, it's going to mess up your joints. And if you don't believe me, this is very common with women. Uh, women wear heels. Not all women, you know, but very common with women. Many women wear heels. And after years of wearing heels, you'll see that their toes are all like smashed together like this. And their joints have literally moved over time to compensate. That's not healthy. So anyways, last like these three... In my opinion, very good for your feet, all day wear. Uh, they're all sort of Munson-based. None of them are true Munson lasts, which is an old anatomical military last meant for all day comfort. But they have that same basic idea of that shape. And that's gonna really serve you well. Toe box height, as I said, it's like maybe about half of the, of the 310, but it's about the same as this 2030 and this 2020, I talked to Brett about it and he said that actually the 1035 and the 2030 originally came from the same exact last. Think of them as twins, but they're not identical twins, okay? So in that regard, yeah, changes have been made over the years, but in that regard, like the length, the toe height and all that is exactly the same unless over the years it was changed a little bit. So um, that's a little bit of lore there that I got from Brett. But this has basically that same toe height. And another big difference for me, this does not fit my skinny foot very well. If you have a bigger foot, like my brother wears a pair of these, the exact same pair from Freenote. Um, and he has a high instep. I have a really low instep. Like my ankle goes straight down and then just goes like almost at a complete right angle. Really low feet. He's got that nice arch under his foot and on top of his foot, big instep. This is really comfortable for him. He could not wear a 2020, not enough for him. He could probably wear a 310, but it caused him a little bit of burn while he was breaking in um, up here in the instep area. But this has plenty of room for that. But, but what that means is for me, these facings are like, psh, like this. If you have a low instep, don't wear the 1035. It will work, like my foot will stay on this, but this is the one last out of all these lasts. This is the one last that it feels like my foot's just strapped to a board and keeps wanting to come off. And the only reason it's not is because someone like lashed my foot to the board. But it's like, it feels like you're walking in snowshoes. It's like, this is not going to work. Uh, so don't do that. And don't size down. Guy, guys are always like, no, not everybody, but I've done this a ton of times. So I just want to save you from this. Usually if something doesn't fit right, they go, well, I just need to size down a half. We'll go down another half. And they just keep going down until it's like snug. But the problem then is your alignment's off. The ball of your foot is not where it should be, which is where the flex point of the boot is. And then your toes are way crammed up in the toe box. And over time, like as the 
foot flexes like this over and over, it's going to jam your toes into the end. And what that's it's doing to your toe joints is like it's doing this to your toes, you know. And over time, it's going to hurt you. Um, my right foot actually, I had pain for like a year and a half because I wore a pair of boots that was too small. If I had done that for years on end, imagine the kind of long-term da term damage that could have been done. So you don't want to do that. You get your correct size. Go a half down or a hold down for Brannock. If the last doesn't work after that, then the last is not for you, and you got to get rid of it. I, I know it costs money and all that. You don't want to do it. But I had to do this whole thing, and I'm glad that I bit the bullet and listened to people who knew what they were talking about and, and did that. Um, better to lose some money than to lose the healthy functionality of your feet, right? So anyways, if you got skinny feet, don't wear the 1035. Does it work? Like, yeah, I can get my foot in it and it won't fall off. But it's the least comfortable Viber out of all these. Yeah, least comfortable. And uh, the toe also, like, um, honestly, if this wasn't horse butt, this wouldn't be the case. But the, this toe collapsed. I'm actually going to, like, re-dip this in water to soak the leather toe puff and, like, try to reshape this because uh, now that it's collapsed, it kind of bugs me. It doesn't hurt or anything. It's not detrimental, but... That toe box like rubs the top of my big toes. If it was soft like the suede right here, like it wouldn't matter because it's so soft. I mean, this this honestly, this clinch, this rubs my toes. Um, you can see where my toe is. This this bump right here, that is from my big toe. But because this is so soft, I mean, just look at this. It it doesn't hurt. It doesn't feel bad. It's not annoying or anything like that. But this is, I mean, look at this. Horse butt is really stiff. So that's another thing you should uh, should know. Leathers like horse butt are, are stiff, whereas like this, which is Chrome XL, turn the other way around, um, very soft. Uh, let's try this one. Yeah, very soft. This has a elastic toe, so that not, not that part, but um, yeah, horse butt though. I mean, it doesn't want to give. So for the reason of it's not a good last for my foot, but also the horse foot is stiff. This is really not a comfortable boot. I don't know what I'm going to do with these. If I can clean them up enough for someone to want them, I'll sell them. Even though they look gnarly, they actually haven't been worn that much. But that is the 1035. Okay, now let's go to the 2030. This is the kind of the baseline, the standard. Uh, True North on a compass for Viberg. Um, everybody seems to know about the 2030, even if they haven't heard of the others. So this is their their flagship model, if you will. As I said, originally same last as the 1035, so same toe height. And the differences, though, are going to be narrower heel. Again, about a medium heel, just like the 310. And not as much volume right here in the instep and the shaft as this 1035. But it's almost as much. Um, again, they were from the same last, so the only ways you're going to get less is if they carved some of that out or if they changed the pattern. And so they only changed it enough to get you get it a little bit tighter. But skinny footed, skinny ankle people, still not a great choice. You can make it work. Like guys do. I, I can wear this. Definitely more comfortable than this. But this is where I draw the line. This is like just getting to the point where you're like, eh, I don't really feel like wearing this thing all day as a skinny footed guy, skinny ankled guy, flat feet, low and step, all that stuff. So another feature of this, which is interesting, this toe is not anatomical. Whereas these two and this one and kind of this one too, honestly, um, they, as I said, they go straight forward more or less and then curve. The end of this, the toe in this, is kind of like a triangle. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but what I'm saying is this doesn't just go straight forward and then curve. It starts to curve in on you here, which means if you have big toes that naturally bend in ju even just a little bit, this can be comfortable for you. But if you're like me, and I've tried this in so many sizes, by the way. I've had a, <laughs> I've had 20, 20, or 20, 30s in size 8, size 8.5, size 9, size 9.5, and, and this is a size 10. So I really know what I'm talking about when I say this. My toes tend to go straight forward, and this likes to push them in. And it was wearing, granted they're too small, 
but wearing size eight and eight and a half and nine Viberg 2030s, which gave me that toe joint pain. It took me like a year and a half to get rid of. So you really don't want to mess with that. Um, what ends up happening with these last is you start buying them and you're buying them based on looks. You go, I like the look of 310 or I like the look of 2020 or 2030. And at the time, that's your favorite last. But guess what? Then you start wearing them and you know what last becomes your favorite? Not just the one that looks good. It becomes the one that works good. So this is what started it for me. When I saw the 2030 for the first time, I was like, this is the most beautiful last I've ever seen. And to this day, and probably for the rest of my life, it will remain, in my mind, one of the best, if not the best, service boot last in the entire world. Like, there's a reason why Brett Viberg, with his 2030, is the one that really just, like, kicked off the service boot boom back in 2007. And no one else, because he's the guy that had the best design at that point. And I think it'll always be if not the best, one of the best service boot lasts out there. As far as just strictly like looks, it's got that look. It's just got it all in the right places. He really knew what he was doing. Um, it worked out. Um, but unfortunately, it's not for everyone. So if your toes tend to want to go straight forward or splay out, this is going to hurt you. Don't, don't wear it. Wear something that works for you. So unfortunately, same with this. These two... Don't have much use for them. Uh, it causes me pain to say it, but yeah, I don't have much use for those. So that's kind of the deal there. So what about the 2040? Well, this one is a really nice anatomical glass. Once again, based on a Munson. So as I said before, it's kind of a V shape. It's gonna be really narrow here in the heel, and it's gonna widen out here with an anatomical shape, just like these two. So these three have a basically the same shape. It's gonna go straight and then curve. The difference being this has a, a toe bump. Not as big as this. This is a bump toe, obviously. Um, not as extreme as the 310, but see that? It's, it's getting there. It's just more rounded, okay? So the 310 seems to have a bigger toe. Like, when you look at this, you're like, no, it's way bigger than this. But actually, size nine and a half, size 10, this is just about as big, but it's just more rounded off. So if you look at this, more rounded off. You can see there, this is more squared, this is more rounded. So it just doesn't appear to be as a, a imposing and aggressive. But there is that bump toe. And that adds comfort. So not only the shape of it, not only the shape of this toe, but having this extra volume, this extra height up in here. Your toes have plenty of room to wiggle. But then kind of like the 310, but even more so than the 310, this has a really low instep. This is a medium, I said. This I would call small. Instep height, many guys say this is the lowest instep that Viberg has out of all their lasts. It might not be the lowest, but I'm pretty sure it is. Even if it's not, it's one of the lowest insteps. So if you have a medium instep, you might be able to make it work. If you have a high instep, you're not going to be able to make it work. So yeah, um, and then as far as the heel as well, if you've got like a narrow heel like me, it's just bone and skin, <laughs> or a medium heel, you can make this work. But if you have a bulbous, fleshy heel, fatty heel, something like that, a 2040 might not be very comfortable for you. Um, it might give you a really hard break-in experience. So yeah, those as I said, those are the really unique factors with this 2040. The V-shape, the anatomical toe, and that bump toe. As far as the facings though, I don't have it here, but I used to have a service boot. These are service boots. Um, this is a hunter boot. I used to have a service boot pattern in the 2040, and the facings were a lot more like this. So if this size 10 were a service boot, It'd be like this one, this 2020, where the facings kind of stay like an inch or an inch and a half apart, even on my super skinny foot, which means they'd be even more if you had a high instep or something. Um, this hunter boot pattern is specifically designed to have the facings come in touch because it's an outdoors boot. Like you're supposed to be like chopping wood, 
like like literally uh brett told me that this wouldn't have had originally had a commando soul like this the ones that his grandfather ed and his dad glenn were selling to loggers and firefighters and stuff like that um, when these were actually used for work back in the day like in the 70s and the 80s um, they had like metal spike studs on the bottom so this was very much supposed to be utility it was functional you could use this you could, you could rely on this uh, you could work in it uh, it's a single piece vamp that goes all the way around right this this wrapping across here all the way to the back that's all one piece to help with waterproofing and stuff um, this is the only Viberg I have that's the storm welt. Uh, this, this one is the flat welt, nice and clean. Everything else is a stitch down product, but uh, I'm kind of getting in the, in the weeds here. Um, ah, what the heck. Uh, generation, <laughs> generation laces, they're paracord laces. I, I really like them, actually, so check those out, generation laces. And uh, my buddy Jimmy, Trinity Handmade, um, his handle on Instagram is Nerdin with Boots. This is a, a, a brown waxed flesh kilty that he made that I threw in there. So these laces are aftermarket and so is this. I think it adds to the aesthetic. Anyways, these facings, they touch. With my skinny ankles and skinny feet, even with thick socks, these these touch all the way up. I can So I can get this snug, but barely. If you have a bit of a bigger ankle and bigger instep, then it'll get even better for you. Um, yeah, the kilty helps a little bit too with that which is one reason that I like kilties. I also just like the way they look, um, especially the old school ones like this when they start curling up after use. Very cool. So anyways, that's the deal. Um, another Chinese broccoli tip for you. One way that you know that your boots are aligned, usually, not always the case, but we can usually say this with confidence with a Viberg, is you look for this crease, and this crease needs to be pretty much right in front of where these quarters end. The quarter ends right here, right? And this crease needs to be like right there. And on the outside, it might dive into it. See how this is like basically touching there? So you can tell all these, boom, it's like right there. If this is happening up here, it means your boot's too small. And if it's trying to crease in the quarter, obviously your boot's too big, but I think you would know that already. So it's more about ball alignment than it is about overall length. Okay, so that's these. Now here's the 2020. This one is the most advanced of them all, as I was saying. So yes, it is kind of like this, where it's like narrow in the heel and it gets wider. But whereas this is just a straight V, it's just like pshaw. This is somewhat narrow here. And, and then when you get to the waist area, the middle, it actually kind of goes in a little bit and to the side, it like hooks, because if, well, I'm flat-footed, so my footprint in the sand at the beach is like, it's just like a footprint. But anyone that's got an arch, what you'll see is on the outside of your foot, you'll see a print. But on the inside of your foot, on right here, where your arch is, there's not as much of a footprint. In fact, there might not be one at all, especially if you have a high arch. And so you'll see like your heel touching the ground in the sand then you'll see like this arc on the side, this line like this, and then you'll see the ball of your foot, all your toes, and then the ends of your toes, right? That's how someone that has a real arch, that's how their footprint will look in wet sand. Well, this is kind of supposed to follow that shape. This is not the 1004 cantilever last that they used to have. Uh, it's the same idea, but it's not the same last. I, I checked with Brett. Um, it's not the same last. It's not like they took that last and then tweaked it and then rebranded it as the 2020. Um, this does have a predecessor last, but it's not that one. That one's a completely different. That was like a, almost like a boomerang shoe, like this crazy hook to it. Um, and it fit hardly anybody's foot and it looked really odd. I mean, it was like pointy at the end, but uh, lopsided. So it was like, you'd have the heel and it would like kind of hook. And then the whole toe box was like <laughs> offset to the side. Really strange looking boot, shoe. They don't use that anymore. This is the 2020. It's a more palatable version of that same idea though, where they want to follow the curvature of your foot all the way. So you've got somewhat narrow heel, kind of goes in and hooks to the outside of your foot, you know, right here. And then it comes back for a nice spacious toe box, but the toe box follows your toe curvature. So 
if you, it's deceiving, okay? So if you look at these two next to each other, they'll look kind of the same, right? Remember that thing about my big toes wanting to go straight forward and wearing the 2030s uncomfortable? Well, look at this. Like this seems like it does this too, right? It looks like this is pushing my big toes in, but it's not really one. This, uh, this curve right here is not as extreme as the 2030. If you can see that. One, it's not as extreme, but two, and it's just so hard to tell this, this whole toe box is offset, okay? It's like, we're talking millimeters here, but it's enough, okay? So it's not like straight in front of the heel. It's not like straight in front of the heel. It's just like ever so slightly like, like that. So the volume proportion, like we talked about at the beginning, where's the volume? Well, proportionally, it's pushed over to this side. So like I don't actually get the toe rub that I get in this. And this is a half size smaller, right? So especially in this, in this it's like freedom. So yeah, other than that, I mean, it's kind of the same. I feel like I've covered all those details already. Got a, got a low end step, probably almost as low as this 2040. High end step people stay away. Good for skinny ankles, good for narrow heels and anatomical right here. So not a ton of wiggle room as far as like up and down goes. Cause like, let's check this out. Half the height, you know? And then uh, if we were to look at this one, lower, yeah, see that? And then here's this one. 1035 with the 2020, they're about the same. So yeah, anyways, which one fits me the best with super skinny toothpick feet? This one, this fits the best. This is the second best actually. If this was a service boot pattern, this would be the second best, but the Hunter is a little more roomy. Um, yeah, and it's got the gusseted tongue all the way up, cool stuff. Um, this is a pretty good fit. Really, really nice, but it's suede, so it's very like floppy. Almost feels like you're wearing a slipper, which is comfortable, but not very supportive. Okay, so that's kind of the deal there. Um, I'm just gonna bring some of these other boots in just so that you can compare them a bit. So size 10D, right? I feel like all these fit well, just so you know. There's nothing in here, I mean, aside from these last not working for me, there's nothing in here that I'm like, oh man, I got the way wrong size. So you can kind of rely that this all goes together, it jives. So, and again, I'm a 10 and a half heel to ball, 10 heel to toe. C461, let's hold this up here. These are both bump toe lasts and both sprung toe lasts. So sprung, in other words, this whole toe goes bloop, like curves up and bump in other words there's like a bump in the toe right so to compare the 55 last by whites is like roughly the same thing this is just the c461 just kind of comes to like a more narrow almond curve or instead of like a bulbous more square curve like a like a, the, the 55 looks like this and it's got that sprung bump toe that the 55 doesn't really have. So anyways, yeah, you're comparing a white to this. I mean, that's kind of the deal. Um, let's look at the berry by Alden, famous, the famous Alden berry next to the 2030. This is gonna be kind of like these, like anatomical, plenty of room straightforward. Maybe if your toes splay out, your big toes splays out, it's not good, but your toes go straight forward or in, you're good and then it curves. Very comfortable last. This is a nine and a half D. So next to the 2030. Yeah, pretty cool. And the instep on this, by the way, like, psh, the facings, they touch all the way up. Um, 
anymore, and I wouldn't be able to use this, but it's just, just right. Go like that, snug. Don't need him to tighten any more than that. Yeah, and this is a berry. Actually, I should hold these up. This is a Vibrig video, but heck, I'll show you whites and all the other brands too. Um, the origins of these two berry lasts are roughly the same, but they're not the same last. That's what I heard. So uh, we'll cover that another time. But in any case, they are similar. Same idea. Once again, anatomical. Low toe box. Yeah. This has celastic in the toe, so it hasn't collapsed quite as much, but this is a leather toe puff. So that's those. Um, as far as the heel, I'd say both of these are more like this 2020, which is a true D width. Shouldn't really wear it if you're like a, you could probably wear it if you're barely an E, but anything more than that, you should, probably shouldn't wear it. True D, well, true D. And uh, also, a lot of these new lasts, whereas before they were uh, standard width throughout, so like this is old school, the 1035 hasn't really been updated. It's more or less one width throughout. The newer 2030s and the 2020s and stuff, they're kind of like Alden's last, where it's a combination last. So like this one, if you look at the inside right here, what does it say again? It says BD. So it's a B width in the heel, because your heels are narrower usually than your, than your ball area. B width in the heel and a D width here in the ball. So that's a combination last. And clinch, the Highliner. So once again, noticing a trend here, the comfortable boots for me anyways are all the anatomical ones. Pretty much straight on the side and then it curves. Now some lasts, they do this in a way that doesn't look particularly attractive, right? Uh, the shape isn't like, wow, that's so beautiful. But I think like the berry last that I was showing you, this one, this clinch, it's a CNS last. They have a way of being anatomical, but also beautiful. Toe box on this thing collapsed like crazy. And as I said, even though it's lower than the toe box of this, because this leather is just so soft, it's a Latigo leather from Wick, Wicket and Craig, it just, it feels like, uh, but something really soft. It just feels like something really light touching your toes like you're wearing a sock it's not that big a deal so that is the deal there's probably other things to be said but i probably covered all the the main stuff these are the five main last that vibrick has i'm gonna review each of these separately as well and take a deep dive with every single one of them but this is designed to help you one if you're struggling with sizing but maybe you just got to vibrick and you're like dude what do i do with all this how do I know which one is right for my foot in comparison to another? Hopefully this saves you a lot of time because this took me several years and trying a lot of pairs, most of which I had to move on because they didn't quite fit. So you can save yourself all that, hopefully, with this video, or at least it will minimize the mistakes. Instead of making 20 mistakes, you're going to make two, I hope. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask me or get on the forums and ask other people. I don't know everything. But I do try hard to find the right answers and, and to tell you what have I done wrong, what have I done right. Um, give the best advice I can um, because often, let's be honest, like a retailer will mean well, but like if you're buying online, like they, like just just saying like half down from Brannock, like that's not enough because it's like well, okay, half down from Brannock, but is the last even right for my foot? Like if I've got this like huge foot and I try to buy this and you told me half down from Brennick, it's still not going to work, right? Or if it's like, again, this, like I said about my toes, they're like, you know, half down from Brannock. Like, oh, it should be a slam dunk then. And then you get it and you find out your big toe naturally splays out this way and this last curves in right there and wants to push that big toe in and it's like, and it hurts. It's like, shoot. And, and then you're not sure, especially if you haven't done this a lot, you're like, maybe I got the wrong size. And you try to go um, another half down and then you try to go true to size and like none of it really works. And you're like convincing yourself, no, the salesman said half down, you know. 
So I'm just trying to give you all that information so that, like, like they're not your enemy. They're, they're trying to, to give you uh, a good experience, especially if you go to a good shop, like Standard and Strange. They're great at what they do. Um, they've done this a lot. They're not car salesmen at all. They're, 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 they're honest, all that. But, like, it's just hard, right? Like, online, over the phone, that can be hard. So, like I said, I just want to help. So I hope that this helps you, maybe saves you some trouble. And until next time, let your boots take you to places more important than the boots themselves.